start uh, with the session. Hello, everyone. And thank you for coming to this session. Today I'll talk about Open Search. What's it as a project? But just before we start with the session, and maybe if more people come in, how many of you are front end, entirely front end JavaScript developers? Half of you? Okay, how many of you have heard of Elasticsearch or use it? Most of you, that's good. Um, so just before we, we start with the session, a few short words about me. My name is Martin. I'm currently a solution architect working for the European Patent Office. I'm one of the guys that helps organize the events of the Bulgarian Java User Group, where we have our annual conference called J Prime. Maybe you've heard of it. It's also here in the tech park, but it's in May. So if you're interested, check it out. Um, also, we do some uh, sessions, meetups, and this year we started a free academy for developers. So this might be also something that's, that's interesting to you. And in particular, in this session, I would like to talk about the Open Search project. Why is it interesting? Why it might be important for you? We'll do a short comparison between Open Search and traditional Elasticsearch. And we'll see how we can interact with Open Search from JavaScript because it's a JavaScript conference, we cannot include at least something to show how we can interact with OpenSearch through JavaScript. Um, I personally had a few projects with Elasticsearch uh, for a few clients. Some of the projects were uh, deployment of Elasticsearch for the purpose of log aggregation. In some other projects, Elasticsearch was used as a NoSQL database. Uh, and in fact, uh, the first time I heard about OpenSearch was when one of the clients came in and asked, OK, I want to have like Active Directory integration so I can log in into Elasticsearch with the accounts that I already have in my organization. And at the time, uh, this is part of the licensed version of Elasticsearch. And as you know, many clients are not willing to pay for licenses. So as much as you can use open source software or free software, you can go with it. And I noticed that OpenSearch provides an implementation of most of the enterprise features of Elasticsearch for free. So as we'll, as we'll see in a few slides, one of the ideas of OpenSearch as a project is to be a completely free open source alternative of Elasticsearch. However, OpenSearch is not compatible with Elasticsearch in any way. Uh, so at the time, I managed to convince the, these customers that it's more uh, reasonable to buy Elasticsearch license because you get other things that you don't get through OpenSearch, for example, such as support and so on. However, open search uh, might be very beneficial for projects that either don't have budgets or, as we'll see, for other reasons. So we'll talk about what the open search project is, how it differs from Elasticsearch, why it exists, how it compares to Elasticsearch, and how we can interact with it. All right. So first, you can think, why do we need another Elasticsearch? Um, Elasticsearch is already a well-developed product. Most of you have heard of it or use it. In, in production, uh, and in fact, all this uh, hustle about open search started when Elasticsearch decided to change their licensing model. So at the time, Amazon was offering a paid service of Elasticsearch, which was competing with the offering from Elastic. And since you know Amazon is a big company, uh, it's a big competitor, Elastic wanted to protect themselves from companies like Amazon to, that can overtake their business, pretty much. So they created a dual license for Elasticsearch. And later versions of Elasticsearch moved from the fully open source Apache 2 license to a dual Elastic and SSPL license. Uh, for that reason, Amazon decided to fork the open source version of Elasticsearch and create a separate product called OpenSearch. Previously, OpenSearch was called Open Distro for Elasticsearch, but they had some uh, issues in that regard from a legal perspective with the name uh, Elasticsearch contained in the product. So that's why they further changed to OpenSearch from Open Distro for Elasticsearch. And the whole idea is that it's a fork of the Apache 2.0 licensed code base of Elasticsearch from version 7.10.2. And it doesn't only fork Elasticsearch, but it forks also the other applications in the Elastic stack. Kibana is also forked, and it's called OpenSearch Dashboards. They forked the project, and they redesigned Kibana, as we'll see in the demo. Uh, and it provides pretty much the same capabilities as Kibana with some new things added by the OpenSearch project. 
And not only that, but Amazon changed uh, their Elastic offering in favor of offering uh, open search uh, services in, in AWS as an alternative to their Elastic search offering. In terms of installation, both OpenSearch uh, and OpenSearch dashboards have a separate installation process, but it's very similar to what you have from Elasticsearch, as you might guess, because it's pretty much the same product that has been forked. Uh, there is no compatibility with Elasticsearch, so if you want to use a plugin, let's say, that exists for OpenSearch, it's highly likely that it doesn't work with Elasticsearch, especially in the newer versions. And versioning of the OpenSearch product is not related to Elasticsearch. In terms of feature, the majority of features are already the ones provided by the licensed version of Elasticsearch. So what they did, apart from forking OpenSearch, they did uh, a development of the enterprise features of Elasticsearch that are part of their paid offering. They took, for example, Active Directory integration and implemented a free plugin that implements that. Uh, as you might guess, this is something that if you have a business and someone re-implements the paid features of your product, that's quite rough, uh, but that's how life is. So some of these features that have been re-implemented by Amazon, such as cross-cluster replication, that pretty much allows you to replicate data among geographically distributed regions, is bound to the Amazon AWS offering. So if you take open search and you want to bring up your own service out of it or separate installation, you might see some limitations related to some of the things in the product related to the Amazon offering. And many of the things in OpenSearch are developed as plugins. This contradicts a bit the way that Elasticsearch is implemented because in Elasticsearch, in the main installation, you have a number of core plugins and modules. And in OpenSearch, they've extracted the, really the main core of the product and everything around it is built as plugins. Now, there are many limitations to using a plugin system like the one provided by Elasticsearch and inherited by OpenSearch. Plugins pretty much run in the same process as OpenSearch, so every time you need to install a new plugin, you need to restart your cluster, for example. Uh, also, if you want to update uh, your Elastic or OpenSearch version, you need to update the version of the plugins because plugins are bound to a particular version of OpenSearch or Elasticsearch. So there are uh, these kind of limitations offered by the plugin system of Elasticsearch that are inherited in OpenSearch as well. For that reason, there is something new developed in OpenSearch project that's uh, specific to OpenSearch. It's not in Elasticsearch. It's called extensions. Extensions runs as separate processes, and their idea is to replace the plugin system already inherited by Elasticsearch with something that's more flexible. So not only they run as separate processes, but they also use the same transport protocol as OpenSearch nodes in a cluster. And they also may invoke actions on other extensions in order to achieve some kind of communication between the different kind of extensions. The general idea behind these extensions is that they replace the plugin mechanism that's inherited by Elasticsearch and solves some of its inherent issues. What about Logstash, you might get, think? Well, the Elasticsearch output plugin for Logstash is not compatible with OpenSearch. In later versions of uh, Logstash, there is a particular check whether the, uh, the target of the output plugin is really Elasticsearch and not something else like OpenSearch. Uh, for that reason, OpenSearch provides a third-party output plugin for Logstash that you can use to integrate data from Logstash to OpenSearch. And not only that, but also OpenSearch uh, ships an open source distribution of uh, Logstash as well that you can use. Uh, there is something new also being developed in OpenSearch that's not in Elasticsearch. It's called OpenSearch Integrations. It's pretty much an implementation in OpenSearch dashboards where we can put different kinds of integrations and ingest data into OpenSearch from OpenSearch dashboards. The standard way you do integrate different kinds of data sources in Elasticsearch is primarily through Logstash, for example. But using OpenSearch integrations, you can also achieve that from the OpenSearch dashboards entirely. So it's something new, and it, for now it includes some integrations with, for example, Nginx, but it will be expanded over the time to include more and more integrations. And in many cases, it can be used in, as an alternative to Logstash. 
What about the different language clients, like for example the Elasticsearch clients which we have for Java, JavaScript or the different kind of programming languages? Well, OpenSearch also provides language clients for multiple languages like Java and JavaScript. And these clients are pretty much forks of the standard Elasticsearch clients. They forked the clients and they did some changes on them which are mostly to rename some of the things which say Elasticsearch to be renamed to OpenSearch. The documentation of these clients is relatively scarce and does not have many examples compared to the original Elasticsearch documentation. Now, if you want to use, for example, the JavaScript client for OpenSearch, you need to install uh, this NPM module called OpenSearch project slash OpenSearch. And then you can import this module and create a client and start interacting with uh, OpenSearch. In the same way, you can also uh, interact with Elasticsearch. As, we, as, we, as I mentioned already, the OpenSearch client for, open, for OpenSearch is a fork of the JavaScript client for Elasticsearch, as it is for the other language clients. Now let's do a brief comparison between Elasticsearch and OpenSearch in some particular criteria. So far I've been talking about OpenSearch but also about Elasticsearch at the same time. But now let's see how the two compare based on different criteria like for example licensing and subscriptions, support, documentation, architecture, naming conventions, versioning, migration options, roadmap and contributions. So we'll look at this criteria very briefly. Now, in terms of licensing, uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, Elasticsearch license as of 7.11 is more restrictive for service providers, which includes service providers like Amazon and other companies that offer Elasticsearch as a service. There is a subscription-based model for enterprise Elasticsearch features, so you need to pay Elasticsearch, and for that you get some additional things like support, uh, uh, some other things related to the SLAs, and so on and so forth. In OpenSearch, on the other hand, you don't have any subscription model. Everything in OpenSearch is publicly available on GitHub with certain limitations related to the features that are bound in a way to the Amazon uh, AWS offering. But the primary, prim primary idea of OpenSearch is to gather contributions from the community. Uh, in Elasticsearch, if you want to contribute something to the public code base of Elasticsearch, it needs to be reviewed by an employee of Elastic and merge by it. In OpenSearch, the model is more flexible, it's more open, so you can more easily put new things like new plugins, improve some code base, or something like that. In terms of support, Elasticsearch, as you might guess, as an enterprise company, provides support options per subscription plan. For OpenSearch, it doesn't have any support. So you can count on support related, for example, to the public forum. If you have an issue with OpenSearch, you just can go in this, their public forum and ask about it. In Elasticsearch, if you have a license, you can also get support from the official support teams of Elasticsearch. In terms of documentation, the Elasticsearch documentation, probably many of you have seen already the Elasticsearch documentation. It's quite rich. It has a lot of examples. And not only that, but you can also copy the examples and run them directly in Kibana or through curl. The open search documentation is a bit more scarce and it doesn't have these goodies that the Elasticsearch documentation has. So you cannot open, for example, and run the example in open search dashboards or copy it as a curl request. Uh, and part of it is related to the fact that some of the open search documentation is also created and contributed by people from the community. So it's in a way not so well organized and it has less examples. In terms of architecture, because OpenSearch is pretty much a fork of Elasticsearch, it inherits uh, many of the features of Elasticsearch, it inherits the plugin system. Uh, however, in OpenSearch, all of the features are implemented as plugins, while in Elasticsearch, some are part of the core installation. And also newer versions of OpenSearch plan to migrate from plugins to extensions, as we mentioned. And the other beneficial thing about that is that uh, OpenSearch provides a uh, developer SDK, that you can use to quickly start developing plugins for OpenSearch. Unfortunately, uh, to the surprise of many, Elasticsearch doesn't provide a, a plugin development guide. If you want to write a plugin for Elasticsearch, you need to go and find something in GitHub to fork it and to see how it's implemented and maybe uh, based on that to implement your own plugin. In terms of naming conventions, you might guess because OpenSearch is a fork of Elasticsearch, what they did, they renamed pretty much everything in the fork product. 
Also, in terms of configuration files, like, for example, OpenSearch YAML, it's pretty much the same file as Elasticsearch YAML, but they just renamed it. Some of the features are all also renamed. In uh, Elasticsearch, we have index, index lifecycle management as a feature, which provides you to create index policies, like, for example, after 30 days, I want to delete the index. In OpenSearch, they renamed that to index state management, which is pretty much the same thing. So in terms of naming conventions, they use the same that they inherit from Elasticsearch, but they did rename it in multiple aspects. In terms of versioning, uh, as I mentioned, it's not, the versioning of OpenSearch is not related to the one of Elasticsearch. Now, latest version is 2.9.0, while for Elasticsearch, uh, well, at the time of the, I prepared the slides was 8.9.1. They are newer, a bit newer versions of Elasticsearch, but they are not related to each other in any way. In terms of migration, if you have, for example, a project already uh, with Elasticsearch, because OpenSearch is a relatively new project uh, created a few years ago, uh, it, create, it provides also a migration guide that tells you how you can migrate from Elasticsearch to OpenSearch, and even it provides a script that can simplify that process. So it, you run a script, and it guides you to the process of migrating your cluster from Elasticsearch to OpenSearch. Elasticsearch does not provide an official guide on how to migrate from OpenSearch to Elasticsearch because that's not pretty much a, a, a scenario yet, or it's not even of interest for Elastic because they are still the main company with the main customer base for uh, Elasticsearch. And it's rare to uh, maybe start with OpenSearch and decide to migrate to Elasticsearch yet. In terms of the roadmap, the Elasticsearch roadmap is not publicly available. They announced some of the new features in blog posts and uh, uh, sessions on YouTube. In OpenSearch, the roadmap is publicly available. You can go to GitHub and see what are they planning to develop in the new versions of OpenSearch that are coming in. So if you open the roadmap, you can see now 2.9.0 is launched. You can see what comes in in 2.10.0 in 2.11, and so on and so forth. So it's, uh, it's publicly available. Uh, in terms of contributions, as I mentioned, the open search depends more on community contributions. Although it's backed by teams at Amazon that work on open search, it still tends to count more on contributions from the community. While Elasticsearch continues to be developed as a company product with contributions, still happening, but merged only by the core team of Elasticsearch. And Elasticsearch put some additional investment into areas specifically related to performance optimizations. Now, let's see how OpenSearch uh, works in action. Now, what I'm going to do, uh, now, if you go to OpenSearch website, which is OpenSearch, uh, dot org. You can, uh, oh, I don't have internet here. If you go to opensearch.org, you can download OpenSearch pretty much in the same way as you can do with Elasticsearch. For example, for, uh, you can, for Windows, you have uh, x64 archive. When you download the archive, uh, you can run it in the same way as you, as you can with, with Elasticsearch. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the OpenSearch uh, installation. I'm going to run bin OpenSearch, but it takes like a few seconds to start up OpenSearch. After OpenSearch is started, you need to make sure that you have the correct version supported for the JDK. Because if you use a newer or an older version of the Java development kit, you might not be able to run the application. In that particular case, I use JDK 11. Uh, once it starts, I can also, in a similar way, start OpenSearch dashboards with a script, very simple script. If you don't want to download and play around with OpenSearch, they also provide a playground. So you can go to playground OpenSearch.org. It's pretty much uh, an instance that they provide of OpenSearch dashboards with OpenSearch behind it. And you can go to it, use developer tools like you can do with Elasticsearch. Because this is Kibana, which is slightly redesigned. You can just go and play around with it. 
Uh, now that I've started locally open search and open search dashboards, the ports that open search uses are the same ones as for Elasticsearch. So because Kibana inherently runs on port 2601, is the same for open search dashboards. So if I open open search on port 2601, I can see Kibana pretty much, which is having slightly uh, different redesign with a bit more features. Now I can go to Dev Tools, and for now I'm not going to do uh, anything about that. A few interesting things that come in with uh, Open Search is a tool called Open Search CLI. So Open Search CLI. How many of you have used uh, kubectl and Kubernetes? Okay, H half of you. So pretty much it provides a tool similar to kubectl, where you can define profiles in a shared file. And this, in this profile, you specify a particular instance of Open Search. And the main idea is that with this uh, Open Search command line interface, you can interact with different profiles that point to different instances of Open Search. So it's uh, something that's missing in Elasticsearch. Now, what we can do uh, here, uh, I have a pretty simple JavaScript file. I've already installed with NPM the Open Search client, which is just one module that you need to install with NPM install. And to create a client that interacts with Open Search, we create a few things. So I specify the host. The protocol is HTTPS by default. The port on which my local host instance runs by default is this one, 9,200. By default, uh, Open Search uses admin admin as username and password. And I need to specify the path to the root CA certificate. When you start the first time Open Search, it's, it auto generates the certificates for you that you can replace. Uh, and now, if you want to create a client, you require the Open Search project as a module. Uh, we require the, the FS module, and then we create a client which accepts a few things. We, it, in the node uh, parameter, I specify the path to my uh, Elasticsearch instance on localhost. And in the SSL section, I read the, the SA, CA certificate that was generated when I run Open Search for the first time. And in the first example, uh, we can create an index. The index is called orders. So we specify the settings uh, as JSON uh, object here. Uh, for settings, I specify the number of shards is one, and the number of replicas, replica shards that gets created is also one. Uh, I don't specify any mappings for my order index, such as what are the document fields of this uh, index. And here, in an async callback, I call the client, I call the method uh, indices create, where I pass the index name and the body of the request, which only contains the index settings. And I console log the response. Uh, it's as simple as that. I can use this, run this example uh, with node, for example. Uh, node, open search JS. As a response, uh, I get uh, the information uh, that's returned from open search and that I get one uh, index created successfully. Now, if I go here in the open search dashboards, I can call, for example, get orders, and I see that I have, uh, I have an index already created uh, into uh, open search. Uh, number of shards and number of replicas is one. Uh, when I define the index, for example, like that, the next thing I can do is uh, I can put index some data in my index. So, for example, I can index one document. I create it as a JSON object like this. Uh, I specify that the ID is one. I set it from my application. And then again, in an async callback, uh, I call client.index. I pass the ID, the index name, and the body, which is the JSON document that I want to index. Uh, okay, so let's run that. Let's put uh, one document into our index. Again, I run node open search JS. Uh, now, if I, I, I see in the response that I have one uh, document that was indexed, uh, the version is one because every time I, I try to update the document, it creates a new version because it's the first time I index a document, it's with version one. 
Now, if I go to open search dashboards, uh, I can do something like get order search. This is the most simple elastic search query that you can get. It's a much old query. And you can see that I have my document indexed already, as simple as that. And also what you can do, you can also do searches from uh, using the open search client. So I have a very simple function called search data. Uh, I specify the index, which is the orders index. In the query, it's a JSON object that specifies the query. In that particular case, I have a match query where the serial number needs to match uh, the keywords that I specify in the query. In that particular case, this is an order for a Dell Inspiron laptop. And then again, in an async callback, I call the client. I call client search, where I specify the index and the query, the index name and the query. Again, we can run the same example with Node.js. And you can see that I get as a response the, the document that has uh, Inspiron as a keyword found in the description in this particular case. So this is how you can interact with open search from, for example, uh, using Node.js. Uh, it's pretty simple. In the same way, uh, you can also configure and use the Elasticsearch client for Node.js. No particular difference here. Uh, in terms of what I mentioned earlier, that it inherits pretty much the plugin system of Elasticsearch. Uh, if you go to the open search installation, so if you go to uh, open search installation, and we have a utility called open search. Uh, let's go to the bin folder. Uh, We have a utility called Open Search Plugins. You can call Open Search Plugins list to list what are the default plugins uh, installed in your Open Search installation. This is the same utility that we have also have in Elasticsearch to list and manage plugins. You can install, you can uninstall plugins. We have different ways to install plugins, either from a Maven repository or using a file on the file system that you have downloaded, and so on and so forth. So this plugin system would stay for quite some time in open search while they develop more their extension system that tends to replace the plugin system. But for the time being, you can use it in the same manner as you do with uh, Elasticsearch. All right, so what we can do now, um, I mentioned to you about OpenSearch CLI utility that's provided by OpenSearch project. Now, if I go to my uh, user folder, I currently have Windows. Um, here we can go to uh, .OpenSearch CLI folder, and I have this config YAML file. Here I have two profiles. I have uh, an admin, uh, a local profile, uh, that points to the local instance that I started of OpenSearch. Uh, and I also have a demo profile which points to the playground instance of OpenSearch. Uh, now, I, using that configuration, uh, I can use OpenSearch CLI tool to interact with any of those two instances. Now, if I go to uh, my root folder, OpenSearch CLI tool, you need to download it separately. It's a simple script. Uh, OpenCLI exe file. Uh, you can see what are the different options that you might have. So, for example, if I say profile list minus C, I can specify the YAML configuration file that I've just shown you. So, if I specify this configuration file, config YAML, I can see that I can list the two profiles that I already have in that configuration file. Now, I can do some things like, uh, for example, um, open search CLI curl uh, minus minus path, uh, let's say orders, minus P, I can specify the profile in that particular case, I can use the local profile, minus C, I specify the configuration file with the profiles. Config YAML, like that. And if I don't have a mistake, 
uh, open search CLI. I have some mistake here because I don't remember by heart. Yeah, I miss a get here. Uh, get. You get pretty much as a response the definition um, of the in, of the orders index. Now, if I use a different profile here, I can run the same command with, against a different instance of OpenSearch. Pretty much what we have with kubectl and the different profiles. Um, all right, and with that, that was everything that I wanted to show now. I think we have time for questions about OpenSearch and Elasticsearch. Any questions? Yes? Yes, yeah, of course. You can use it on-prem to install it and even deploy it and distribute it without any restriction as part of your application. Or you can even bring it uh, as a service somewhere, let's say in, in uh, Google Cloud, in GCP. Or... Yes, they also provide a, a Docker container for OpenSearch. And they also have Helm charts that you can use to bring up OpenSearch as part of your Kubernetes deployment. Do you mean that if you if you want to bring up the same open search cluster or different clusters and somehow synchronize them? That will be problematic because the cross-cluster replication offering has limitations bound to AWS. To be honest, I haven't tried it and used it. Uh, but maybe if you want to achieve that, you need to provide some kind of a workaround, maybe in the configuration, uh, or use uh, or deploy in AWS. They try to brand it as a completely free and open source product, but it has this kind of small limitations related to some of these enterprise features. Although you can still fork them because everything is in GitHub and you can still modify the code base on your own, but that's, as you can guess, not a very trivial activity sometimes because you need to go uh, analyze the code base, see how it works, and then modify it accordingly. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yes, question? In terms of performance, you mean? Ah, if you use, uh, uh, if you have, uh, if you use it as a service, let's say. Uh, I haven't compared the pricing, for example, between Elastic offering of Elastic and uh, Amazon offering of Open Search. I would guess that the Amazon one would be cheaper than the official Elastic one because they uh, uh, they scale better in a way and they, their service might be cheaper in a way, but you need to compare. So it's a very good question because if you want to decide to go with a service offering, uh, you need first to measure quickly what would be the resource utilization of the cluster that you might have. And based on that, to, to do a rough estimate on what would be the cost of using it in Amazon or using an of official Elastic offering. So it's a matter of a resource planning, to be honest. but. This is the theory. In practice, if you start and see that this in imposes like a cost that you don't expect, then you might give a try to the other offering. Pretty much they provide some kind of a trial that you can use. And they also have, uh, specifically for Amazon, they can provide, a, uh, they have a calculator that roughly estimates the cost. I'm not sure about the Elasticsearch offering. Even if they don't have that capability, you can ask officially Elasticsearch, what would be the cost of running, uh, uh, of using their uh, service, and how much would that cost based on this kind of resources that you have. And they'll give you a rough estimate on that. Yeah. Yeah. So as long as OpenSearch is a fork of Elasticsearch 7.10.1, you can guess that uh, if you use the very earliest version of OpenSearch, it's the same in terms of performance of Elasticsearch. 
But over time, so they also invested into trying to make some kind of performance optimizations in some of the plugins that they wrote. At least this is what Amazon states. Uh, states. However, uh, Open Search pr primarily puts investment into performance optimizations in certain areas, in certain features. Like, for example, uh, they have provided some features related to geological data. That, if you want to index such kind of data into Elasticsearch, and in that they provide certain. Uh, performance optimizations, which is not the case with open search. So I tend to say that the performance is measurable in the same way in the most scenarios. However, if you use some more specific things like uh, ge geographic data, for example, or something more specific, then in that case you need to measure the performance. It might turn out that in some cases open search performs better, uh, but in the majority of cases the performance is pretty much the same. Other questions? Yeah? yeah. Uh, in the matter of configuration, is there any difference? Is it easier to configure LAS versus the... Yes. Yeah. Pretty much the same configuration. What they did in the configuration of OpenSearch, they just renamed some of the properties that you have. <laughs> so it's the same property, but they just renamed it uh, to something else. I mean, when you use the service, I guess, in AWS, it's like easier to configure. To configure. To be honest, I'm not, I haven't uh, checked the Amazon offering of Elastic, but um, uh, yeah, they provide more automation to be able to configure the, and scale the Elasticsearch instance out of the box. So that's the main uh, idea of using Elastic or OpenSearch as a service is that it alleviates you from the need to manually bring up the cluster to, config, to provide configuration and so on and so forth. It would be... Yes, Elastic Cloud also provides this, but I'm not sure in terms of how much, for example, through the UI of the Elastic offering and the Amazon offering, you can automate many of the configuration things. Like, in both, it's very easy to spin up a cluster, to add new instances. These are the basic activities that you can do in both. But in terms of some more specific configuration activities, there might be some differences. But the main things like managing the cluster, adding new instances, removing instances, upgrading, because it's also some of the activities of, uh, that are automated to these services are things like backup and restore, things like you want to upgrade easily. If you have an on-prem installation of Elasticsearch, sometimes it takes uh, quite some effort to upgrade, for example, from Elastic 7 to Elastic 8, and it's the same for OpenSearch. And these kind of activities are out of the box provided by these offerings. But since um, Amazon already shifted to OpenSearch in favor of Elasticsearch, and over time, the two products diverge. So OpenSearch would develop features that are not in Elasticsearch and vice versa. This would require adding different kinds of capabilities in their offerings that do not link to each other. So it, it's, you can think of it that although it's a fork of Elasticsearch, it evolves as a separate product that's maintained primarily by Amazon. Maybe, maybe. Yes. A yeah, couple of buttons and you bring it up, yeah. Yes. Well, for example, I guess if you want to use some kind of like S3 storage, for example, to back up data from Elasticsearch or OpenSearch in the case of Amazon, it's easier because S3 offering is from Amazon, so they provide easier way to, to do that. Uh, in some, certain cases, yes, you're right that uh, with some of the things provided by the other Amazon services, it would be easier to integrate than, uh, if, especially for applications that already run on AWS. Uh, they still can use Elastic offering, but in certain cases, it would be easier for them to have the open search offering. Now, one of the things that I didn't mention here in that particular case is that if you're a uh, big enterprise customer, and in some cases, you are subject of some compliance uh, requirements, like, for example, banks, some financial institutions. In that case, some of these requirements ask that the products that you use and deploy in production have good support, have certain SLA terms. This is something that if you want to run OpenSearch separately, you don't have that. So if you want to have that, you can use the Amazon offering. But if you want to uh, use the free version of OpenSearch, you don't have that. 
compared to the paid version of Elasticsearch, the licensed version. So I tend to say that if you're a big company, I don't think you lose anything if you buy the Elastic license because Elastic anyway is the official product. There is a company behind it. With OpenSearch, the future is not so certain. So at some point, they, they uh, may decide not to invest that much into it. They'll do as long as they have customers on AWS that use OpenSearch. But if that customer base starts diminishing, they may decide to stop investing and developing this product. So uh, I, I tend to say that if you're a big company, you can go the safe path using Elasticsearch. If you're a small startup that wants to put some kind of enterprise search functionality in the product, you can freely go and use OpenSearch with its, some of its enterprise capabilities. OK, other questions? No, then thank you very much for the attention and enjoy the rest of the conference. <laughs>